T-minus 30. T-minus 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17. Guidance release. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. We have ignition sequence start. The engine is now building up to 7.7 .7 million pounds of thrust. We have a launch commit and we have a liftoff. The speed arm is moving back. The Saturn V lifting off the top. Top the pad building up thrust. We clear the tower. Houston is now controlling. Oh, I have to run to Roger. Get your old program started. Good. This is Big Duke 6. This is Big Duke 6. Can you uh, give me a report on that uh, near side sill there, good buddy? Roger Control. Astronauts report the sill is good. After separating that sill from the centre section of the chassis, 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 who knows? We find we wire brush that up using over here. We've featured this before. Careful with these, gotta have, gotta have, gotta have full face protection for this. I'll show you how we do the full face protection. Bit of alliteration again, the double F's there. A full face mask. Reason, the pieces of wire will separate out and at high speed you're going to look like Hellraiser. Okay. If you don't know Hellraiser, it's a guy with loads of pins in his face. Either that or it's going to look like you've had acupuncture. And funnily enough, with acupuncture, you end up with uh, needles in your face for things in your feet. Right, now then. It's so clean that it's silly. Now, you would have expected, right, that that would have been a bad rotten silt. And indeed, in case that it was, and in expecting that it was... Buried there under some grime is the other pair of the sills that we had. A sills, sorry, chassis, uh, chassis that we had, but we don't need it. Because it, you know we're trying to keep it Bramble's original metal on here, so what would be nicer when the car's done and we're, we're sat in a sunny, stately home field at a car show on a tartan blanket, thinking and looking under the car and saying, no, that was, that's the original chassis like can it survived i mean the fact that it's survived warrants it to be saved so a little bit of rust treatment on it but it doesn't really need much i'm looking at just a little bit of it hasn't even tried really to get through a dent in it there we better hammer that out see that dent we better hammer that out a dent there, we better hammer that out dolly's time i'll get that dent out of there but this is our nice chassis leg we're going to treat it we're going to um, weld through primer it, then we're going to zinc 182. And then we're going to get ready for that to, to reattach itself to the floor pan. We flip the floor pan upside down, double F's again, and we prepare the bottom of the floor pan, just key that metal a little bit, 
and get a, a run of weld through on the flip side so that it meets up with the face on here and then we can take our choice uh, to resistant weld, spot weld or to plug weld. Uh, you will notice of course that we piloted this which leaves us with pilot holes. What you normally do with them is drill back through, use that and drill back through into this then from this side use the hole cutter and that creates your um, exact positions and the amount of welds which you would ha have had when you took it off. So that's something you were doing concours um, you, you know you can reuse these and then it seals them up when you do your plug. We've got that option on the table if we want it. The only thing that sort of stops me from that is I didn't do it on that side because it was a different system with it being a new chassis leg on the off side which means I wouldn't have symmetry which will annoy me a bit. Um, we are actually putting some plug welds on that other side as well as the spot welds but um, I don't know what to do now. I don't know if to spot weld it and then actually plug it as well. If we uh, only spot weld it we will be left with these um, re they won't be holes because it obviously meets the floor pan but there'll be little recesses now the lips of the sill uh, chassis leg are seam sealed although they weren't done like that from factory I always like to seam seal this lip edge in which case those holes disappear but they would be there leave that with me I'll make my decision on that it's a minor thing for the moment we need to get some paint into this lovely um, chassis run and then we need to scuff up that side there and get some weld through on it. Once that's got the weld through on it and it's paint painted we can place the floor pan into position and it's really ready to start welding up. Okay. One, two, three, rust converter, molecular. Into the chassis we go after wire brushing it out. That cures pretty quick. And then re-clean back the facing edge. I just use the Jerry Special our nice uh, sanding pad gets you a good clean surface to work off there and now we go weld through on that face then mask off the face and then paint in the inside of the chassis with the um, the first prime the X prime and then we're going for the the brown finish and then we're done for that's prep that so those three stages going on on that one getting ready and of course over this side there's the old floor this side mask off and apply your weld through for that area you might know we've not got the pink we wish we did have next best thing is the u-pole all right in we go for that it's not as critical simply because you're only talking about the facing edge the main inside run it's blitz with wax oil, it's also going to have paint on it as well. So, so again the same procedure for here. We scuffed up the metal as well. It does have a kind of anti-corrosive coating on this. If you see, you've got to take that off because it tends to um, not be as good through. You get a bit, it's like a, I don't know what, there is a finish on these panels. Must be to stop them rusting in storage, which you've got to take off. Any edge that you're welding on it helps. It will burst through it. But it's best to take it off. I found it's cleaner. I've plugged up the MIG, uh, sorry, not the MIG, the tech screw holes. It's just easier doing it now than when it's in the car. Okay, and now we're ready to uh, start getting this in position once we put the rest of that paint into the actual chassis leg, uh, the chassis rail run. Okay, more paint going on. One floor pan ready. So the brown primer finally goes on top, masked off so it doesn't interfere with the, the weld lines. And then we go into the car to see the chassis leg with the primer on top of there. So that creates a, a cavity finish on the panel. So I'm going to offer the floor pan up now. 
ready to start getting it in position. Okay, we're quickly snapped into place there and looking initially good. So what I'm going to do now is get this edge of the sill and the edge of the floor pan nice and parallel and lock that with three sets of locking pliers. So this side's bang on straight. Then we can just start jiggling into position into the central spine, the central tunnel. And then we can start positioning the one mil clamps and getting some tacks in there and then it's the same as the other side so quite a bit of prep work involved with it to get it how you want it to get it looking good but we're, with it, we're nearly there now to start getting some as soon as this goes in we instantly gain a little bit more strength this side and it's a case of doing the same again pulling the sills out getting the inner sill on and uh, and moving okay clamps Just down at the uh, the chassis fork end, and it's hard to get the clamps in now, the spacing clamps. But luckily, because it's gone really uh, solid, nothing's moving anymore, and we've still got a nice parallel line. If you have a look at that cut line, it's been like that most of the way round. We've we've been a bit better this side for devi deviation, so we close up just a little bit there. That that's fine because we don't lay the weld in like we did here. And we make sure that the weld isn't just sitting on the surface of the two piece of metal that it actually fuses between the two facing one mil surfaces of the two sheets that way it's when you grind back it's still got the depth of the metal through you don't want to be having your weld sat on top and then grind back and then you find it hasn't hit through the gaps okay so what we're going to do we just get it a little tap we've got the dolly hammer couple more tacks on then just we can push on it a little bit just because the clamps uh, won't fit just behind where the chassis leg is it's okay here it's just as it reaches that area there but as it happens it's lying quite flat already have a look just to show you see how it's already lying quite flat and then we lose a little bit there we just push, push down okay I think that's acceptable if that's the only error I've had on the whole pan I can certainly be very happy about that especially here actually where it's quite tricky to get to because of the chassis fork it's actually almost self leveled itself look so what happens if you just take your time with the cut it pays off later in big time and just measure 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 again mock it up make sure you screw it up with them tech screws and it, it pays off because you end up making a neater job and if you if you're a better welder you'll get an even better job than I'm doing but um, we've done all right. We're closing up now between the tacks. More tacks up that end. But we're just going to start tacking along here now and then close up. We should be all right to get the welder in, even though those gaps have closed a little bit. I think we'll do fine down this end. I wouldn't worry about it. So just letting you know about measuring and getting your cuts. It just makes life easy when it comes to fitting the pan back together. You're going to get much more of a flush job there. Okay and it's less work to do on the flip side of the car. I'll carry on with the welder now. Rear of the floor pan, then near side, nearly done.
Whew, what a mission. Right, we're all welded up. It actually was a little bit easier being closer together there. Don't know why, but it just was. So the bead goes all the way round. Okay, and then we've spot welded in that chassis leg. Just about get the spot welder in. Checked them, pulled on the, tried to snap them. They're all solid. I, I wasn't sure, you know, with it being the chassis run, I thought, well, if these spot welds are weak, but I couldn't get it apart. So I bent and flexed the floor and the uh, chassis didn't ping any, didn't hear anyone ping off. Relayed down the cross member and now we've got the reference holes on this side that we've drilled. You see how the tech screws help because we can position this piece exactly in the same place it came off because now we've lost the reference holes that side but this now self guides it back into the place it was. The floor's all fitted all right at the front as well. So really, it's a, it's a flush fit, I've got to hand it to them. They did a good job on the floor pans. Not a real difficult job to do. So we've got to file back and grind back and then skim in the line. Um, some areas, you get away with it. Others, you've got to just put a, a skim and a filler over it to hide it if you want to really make it neat. Although, because it has them tar pads on, you know, half that stuff, the finer finishing of this, it's never going to be seen, but at least you know it's tidy under the, the tar pads. You've at least cleaned up all your welds and then skimmed it in and then primed it. Trying to get it as good as a floor pan as we can. Pan? Can. And underneath we'll have to go and do the usual uh, sanding back, knock the weld heads off if there's any proud underneath. The sill came off with a bit of a boot. And then we've got to clean up underneath the B pillar. This is a salvageable B pillar, I think. No rot on the inside, pitting on the outside, but light and not gone through there. So we can put another bottom on it if we want, but I don't think it needs it. To be fair, I think it's got away with that. A repair needed here, the same as we did last time, where we make shape a little piece of metal and graft it in. And then we'll be looking as good as the other side. We'll go around and have a look at the other side in a sec. This is just a conclusion at the end of the day. Some tricky fun around the B pillar here where it's at, at it quite badly. That could do with a repair section off another car really. Um, just because of the, the complexity of that curve. It could, be, it could be hammered out. But it may have that section on the Portuguese. It might That bit might have survived. We need to go and look in daylight. The bottom bit of the Portuguese shell's knackered, so it's about as bad as this one, and it's all bent when, from the accident, and they've hammered it out and put like fiber fiber fill in it. But there is the roof section of the other shell. Um, the, I've got half a back end. They actually, they actually cut it just there, so they, they may there may be bits on that. So we need to go and uh, amalgamate our parts. We'll just you know. Get all the parts as one and see what we need. So the aim is for phase, this is phase two that we're in now. Phase two ends when it reaches the wheel tubs, then we stop for a break. So we have a recharge and we have a week off and then we, we recharge and have a rethink and we tidy up. We do for the first proper deep clean of the workshop. So we take the shell out, roll it out and we take everything out of the workshop, wipe every single thing down and then repack the workshop. So the, the whole workshop gets completely stripped, everything out, and then everything back in again after phase two. It's a three phase, uh, not electricity, it's a three phase shell resto. Final phase is the rear end. Phase two includes the roof, by the way. This will be the roof most likely next. Uh, or phase two is the back and phase three is the roof. We have to make a decision on that and what's going to look best but I for me I'd like to be doing the roof and um, there's plenty of strength back in now we need to tie in the chassis rails to the back part of the chassis rails where they're separated at the moment with some tech screws I think just to lock it together then obviously we must remember when we put the sill on on this side to jack it together to 136.4 between 136.2 and 136.4, there's some uh, filler in to do on it at the front end, little bits, 
you know, little craters and things like that, pitting, anywhere there's any pitting, that's really down to the body shop. We saw that uh, bottom jack repair, it's now on its proper lock pin, so it's connected up to the chassis. Cut. Whoops, just caught the, the stop button. Yeah, so any, any light fill, and of course you saw the jacking point repair on, and then it's got its locking bar through. A pillar on this side's done, you can see where the hinge hinges are dug into it. When we bolted it up pretty tight when we were just checking that door aperture rough setting. Background to this then, those four holes you see here which I used to drill into the spot welds of the chassis leg when we were removing it piecemeal, they get new pieces of metal put in, I just drill four circles because I can't find the ones that come out of this. Four circles and then we're going to weld them back in because we're using this. Well, Tony's kind uh, return of the other one, but that can go to someone who needs it. And there's going to be a lot of parts left over for people to use if they want. They're going to get in touch with me if you need any of the scrap bits. They're not scrap to you. They may be not needed for me when I say scrap. You know what I mean? It's spares, cut off pieces, even if there's anything down here, guys and girls. On your restos, if you need anything, and most of it is junk, and some of it's getting given away at the NEC in March. Don't forget to come down to the NEC in March. Yeah, so bits there. I, keep, I think the battery's going on the camera, it's just starting to cut off. I'm going to get out of here now, call it a day. Alright, so pretty good. Approaching the end of phase two. We'll catch you in the next episode if this indeed is the end. If not, it's another day. For me, it's only a minute for you. See you back in Cortina City. Pete C signing out for the evening. Root beer. See you later. I have now ground back. Sean did a little bit on that side. I did a little bit on this side. We get most of it. We don't get it all. We get little overlaps, as you can see. But let me nail it's not much. Take you in, show you what I mean. Like shadowing where it's probably deformed the edge of it as it's welded. It's difficult. I think the more skilled you get, I've got it there, the better you get with that. You know what I mean? So, but the, I just use that alley filler again now over there, then sand it back. So that's prepared. I've put the holes in, floor pan holes in. So they're in, and then. I'm getting ready to do this seal on this side. Not sure whether I should do some skimming on them, that joint and have it finished and done with. We cleaned most of the weld the other side. It wasn't as built up the other side. It's more flush on the other side. We leave a little bit in the corner because some welding going on with the chassis fork. So we're only going to do a bit of that. Um, it's probably best to do it. So I'll get some filler mixed and in there, laid in, and it's done and out of the way, like, because that might flash rust as well, so, especially if you're using other chemicals around, some chemicals will attack the metal, so, I don't know, um, some of the metal flashes over, I don't know why it does that, but it does, so, yeah, I'll do a mix, and I'll get that, then I'll start cleaning up this area for these sills, we need to get this extracted, ASAP, I'm going to get this from the back, rather than try and drill these non-visible spot welds. I might come in, because I can't really feel them. I might just take the sander in there and keep going until it breaks down. And the same on this side, rather than trying to damage this face, I'll try and keep that intact. If I start trying to find the welds in here now and drilling through, you end up making a mess of that and you lose its shape as well, because it is dimpled in to take the sill. It's nice. That dimple's deliberate there. That's a nice piece, and I don't think it's rotten. We'll know a bit better when we cut the remains of the sill off. In fact, let's have a little peekaboo inside. You never know, you might be able to see. You've got more power than I have. You've got the power of the iris. Although I can just see it now. And you'll also notice uh, I, my camera's all starting to take grinder hits on its lens. I've got a spare lens for it, a lens glass. It needs swapping starting to take hits on the lens glass but we've got a, break, a breaker camera which we can strip the lens glass off and fit it. Look inside. So it's up there we wanted to look at. 
can't quite tell because there's a full silt run in it hiding it so it's not really going to be any use that's, that's a rubbish idea isn't it a little rubbish uh fillies hopefully i can make that really really tick 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 with a mig i'm hoping and up here a bit of swiss cheese up there for repair up, up there for repair these little rhyming couplets just I'm going to start writing some poems, I think. Anyone, anyone want me to read your poem at the end of the... They sound boring poems, but they're not. Poems can be fun. If you make them entertaining types. There is some on my channel somewhere. I'm going to put, I'm going to put one of the poems at the end one day for you. Just have a, I've got one about an iPhone. It's quite funny. iPhones. Oh, they make me angry. Because people are staring at them all the time. They are handy, but use and abuse. Um, go to a restaurant and stare at your iPhone. Don't talk to your wife. Just stare at your iPhone. And even the wife stares at her iPhone. They're not even talking anymore. And these are designed to help communication. What's going on? People bumping into lampposts, staring at the screens all day. The latest technology, new technology, latest iPhone, iPhone 3, iPhone 4, iPhone 5. Can I have an iPhone, please? Can I have the latest iPhone, please? There's nothing wrong with my iPhone. I've got a Nokia snake phone, there's nothing wrong with it. It's got it. No, no, it's not a Nokia, it's a 6610 slide. It's even got a camera on it. How about that? A camera on it. You, you can take pictures with your phone. Wow. And don't get me started on washing machines. Don't get me started. My washing machine's 23, 20, no, what am I on about? It's 24 years old, my washing machine. Mum says, can I get one with a bigger drum on the front? It's not much ring in these big ones now, AAA rated, AAA energy rated. Mum, the amount of washing that I do, have you seen me shirt? The amount of washing I do, I would... I, would, I think I calculated I'd be uh, to recover the money by scrapping my washing machine, right? And uh, going out and getting a new one from Dixon's or Tandy. I don't get my washing machine from Tandy's. I don't think they ever sold them. I'm going down to Tandy anyway to get some sp surround speakers uh, after I've done this car off to Tandy. But um, you have to recover the extra money you've got to pay for the energy saving benefit. I think, based on my average wash use in kilograms, so I wash a shirt, what, every, wash a shirt, let's say, wash shirt, every couple of months I'll wash a shirt, underwear, nah, I do the underwear every week, but let's say, seriously, um, a, couple, a wash a week, right, wash a week, I think if you calculate it out, my energy consumption on my super duper Indesit washing machine that I got in, in the early 90s, I had to weld the drum on it. That's the only thing I'd done. It sprung a leak, but I welded it. Um, to recover it would take. I would be. I think a hundred and seventy-seven years old, and then I broke even. How about that? Now, unless unless we've got uh, the secret to everlasting life, I really can't see Mum uh, changing my washing machine just yet. Right, we've done our little chat. I really like our little chat. Are you? I'm going to call these our YouTube chats. Because it's a bit cosy, isn't it? I've got a big audience out there now, and you've grown. Do you know? You should be proud. Nearly nearly 12,000 of you out there. What, what are you doing? How have we grown? We've, we've done really well. Well, I enjoy chatting to you. I enjoy welding the car, but I enjoy hearing what you're up to. I'm, I don't know. Sometimes I'm more interested in... The film and the YouTube than I am doing the car. I don't know why. So, the little chats, the little diversities, washing machines this time. Talking of washing machines, did you see that clip in episode 14? Oh, we're messing with a washing machine, weren't we? Okay, it is time to drill out. It's time to drill out the remnants of this and then take a little bit of a a vote, you lot out there, what would you do in my boat, eh? Vote, boat, it started again, everything's rhyming by accident. Portuguese to the rescue. What's the Batman tune? The Portuguese to the rescue. Look at the repair, everybody. Look how it was all, look at that, rippled. Look, they're just, what have they done? This must have had such a smack. 
do we use this piece? Or do we make our piece? Make piece? I'm not, I'm not at war. Dempsey. We could. But you know we can form that shape quite easily. I just can't decide. It's one of the things I cannot... I'm going to... I'll wire brush it up and just see what it looks like. But it's squashed as well. Look, it's been smacked. Dunno. Leave that one with me. Right, there's some nice old sill to remove this side. A little bit tricky to spot. Spot the spots this side. Just the way they are, there's not much of an imprint there. So I'm going to go from underneath with the uh, file. And then take them out from under there. We're just going to keep looking underneath there and go from underneath. Okay, so that's how we're going to do it. Just break it down in little bits. Just because we can't, we don't want to damage this by drilling too big a hole in it and I can't feel an imprint or anything and indeed this side as well struggling to feel anything there I'd rather just come in from the back it's going to take a bit longer and slowly eat away the metal using the power file and just nibble it away I think that's going to be a better option it's quite a few to do because you've got around the front of the sill as well but I think we're just going to extract it as neatly as we can just because I can't see them spot welds very clearly and because we don't need this metal we can we can slice it up as we've used in the past that technique where we can just cut so we've made a cut down there okay I'm just gonna try and wiggle this out got the light there I'm gonna look underneath and see how far we're nibbling at it and start nibbling away okay that's the plan leave that with me for a minute while I get on and file away for near side sill installation just to keep you up to speed we've sliced the bottom of that A pillar where there was some rust that had got through but the rest of it's okay taking you across to the vise and we'll show you what we've done we've repaired we've put in a, a new shaped piece of metal that's the mounting face of it and then a new inlay shaped it in just got to tidy up the welds on the inside and we're just fitting a new captive nut which we're just going to spot in each corner uh, spot in each corner there so that's all newly fabricated metal at the bottom of the a pillar and the rest of it's intact we cleaned it back to see one pinhole which we made up that's gone another one there we made up that's gone the rest of it's thick good usable metal there of uh, Bramble's original A pillar bottom with just a new face on the front of it and shaped in and a whole new inlay so this whole base inlay has been replaced and then you won't be able to tell I'll show you in a minute what it looks like we'll just get that captive nut for the that fixes the bottom of the wings underneath and you could put a nut and bolt on that these are good and they're the right ones to fit okay well, actually, you'd never get a, a nut and bolt in it. But if they ever, these do tend to, if you if you if your wing a pillar bottom's rotten, you find that your wing detaches. But that's because all this has gone anyway. So we should be good there. Don't forget plenty of wax seals in it as well, and it'll obviously be getting uh, painted before it goes on. Bar the face of here, which is for the sill face, but it's a uh, well through primer for that. Four little tacks to hold the captive nut and that repair piece can be put back onto the car. I know we had to slice it off, but we couldn't have made this on the car. Okay. Right, that piece is done and ready to rock. And then that captive nut's welded in at the bottom. And then don't think there's much else we can do except fit that on. The rest of it's alright. Fit that on. And we'll see if we can get that in line and get a weld on there so it's uh, seamless. That's the next job. These repairs down here are going nice. We've just let a little piece of metal in there, a little square to fix the edge of that. So we uh, laid the square over, sprayed it, cut round, dropped it in flush, used the quick grips there. These just have a low, they don't grab hard, they're just for when you're putting two pieces of metal together, the quick grips and just hold stuff in place. They're not for squashing things together, just for holding these squash. So I let that piece in, we've started to do some pinhole repairs going in quite well. 
you blow back a little bit at first but then chase till you find the good metal again because it's been dipped it's not long before you're back to, to good metal that's one of the advantages again up here just leaving one little pinhole so we just hit that again until they're all gone most of them are gone down there now so a pillar starting to take shape there's the repair let in nicely there nice and solid so we're in and blended good so bottom of the a pillar is fixed nice fixing bolt for the wing when we're ready good fit there up we go here then to the probably the worst part of the a pillar we've got a hole there and then this metal's compromised so a little patch piece cut as an oval gripped in place then well through primer as the mask then we're going to use the file sander to take that shape out exact then drop this piece into position then weld it in it's probably going to leave an, in, uh, a, a, an imprint so we'll have to skim over that one I doubt we'll get that completely flush there's no way around it that's what it's about we've got to put uh, the repair panels in the best that we can get it is a slight contour only just which I've shaped into this a little bit we'll see how good we can get that to lay into there okay because that's quite hold I think if I was to start trying to make them up it's not going to work I think it's just best to take it out okay gonna do that now sorry about the weld in the background there it's just because it's on and ready to go an update on this little patch repair this metal watch which was going to cut is really nice and solid so there's no need to remove it I went through with the power file and just dug it into the metal to see how soft it was and took out an area which I think is good and it's really clean and plenty of meat on it it seemed a shame to go that big so I've reduced the size of the patch I've now held it flush with a magnet and I'm going to put a tack in the corner lift the magnet away and then keep on tapping it till I can get it as flush as I can and then weld that in position so that's an update that's the last of the damage well there's one little bit of damage here too look so we'll fill that as well other than that it's survived the a pillar definitely didn't need swapping it's too there's too much good metal on that and as i said about the dipping process it leaves no stone unturned so what you see is the worst it, it's ever i mean it, it took everything and just leaves you with the best so we're good plenty of good metal there and of course we've done the repairs lower down so a pillar nearly finished a pillar front finish remember that piece we did use the piece off the Portuguese car in the end and grafted it in it got acid dipped neutralized back then it's been welded in at the top so that gives you that piece again ready to receive the inner sill soon we've got to now do our last challenge so we're up against our last challenge and we're almost through then for the tricky bits of fab work and that's uh, the last challenge is to make something of that okay there's a couple of options I've got I'm tempted to nip up to stores and grab a piece which I think is in stores I'm going to take the angle grinder up to the lock up open up the lock up and try and drag the pieces out that I think are in stock because I'm sure they're better than that that might save me time I've just got to cost the fuel and the transport and the time to get up to the unit I suppose at the time it'll take to fab this so I've got to just cost that out I'm looking like a 50-50 mix because it's a fair whack to me lock up so We'll have to see. Say it's a fair whack. It's not so much that it's getting it out because it's buried. It's that's, that's the time. Distance is 15 minutes. Time dragging out. All the stuff that's in front of it is a bit different. We'll see. But going good. I'm getting a bit more happy as uh, I get these horrible jobs out of the way. I say horrible jobs. They're enjoyable. It's just the the sort of you never really know where you are in terms of. When you see a pinhole, if it's going to reveal anything, it hasn't revealed anything. Just there are no surprises because of the dipping. So you don't get shocked that you find it just unfold into a massive hole. What you've got is what you've got when you come back from dippers. Well, going into that now, please. Okay, everything's ready down here. Another little time warp for you, YouTubers. Okay, so we're done there. We're dressed. We're dressed. We're done, we're done, we're done. So, A pillar, we can sign that off for now. Going across to B pillar then, or troublesome B pillar, but I don't see it as trouble as such. Have a look then, come on down with me for a little bit. We talked in the earlier films, you may have not seen it. If you've not, <clears throat> you'll see us talking about uh, the 
the fact that this wing was replaced at some point in the, in the life of the car because we found a part sticker inside it which wouldn't be fitted at the factory it only be fitted when the wings go into stores and indeed it's backed up by the fact that it's mig down so you can see I'm now starting to touch the MIG points that the crash repair people have done. Rather than plug welding, they've put the MIG into the corners all the way down and way round the window and everywhere. Some ways, I don't know if it'll make it harder to take the remnants of the quarter off or not. But that's in phase three when we start doing that. We're still in phase two, which is getting the sills and inner sills on. But because this forms part of the operation, and it needs replacing I've decided that it's time to do this B pillar completely rather than repair the bottom end and go up and repair this it's actually easier to do the whole job now we've got bad damage here forget the wing it's gone we've got bad damage there so we're going to start to look at how they made these pillars and I'm now going to take you across to the lovely saviour in the form of a donor section of metal which is just fresh in to the parts department all these chopped up bits of bloody stuff I've been stashing around have paid off you can see it's a common rot spot because this donor section is also rotted at the bottom it doesn't worry me just yet the main mission is to look at how we can integrate some of this into Bramble's body shell and again this one's rotted in a similar area However, that's almost repairable. Looking inside how they're made, you can see that the B pillar around the window aperture is two halves of metal spot welded together. You can see those two fork sort of shapes, the two legs coming up together at the top to form a Y shape. My plan is first to extract the remnants of the quarter wing off this piece concentrating on saving most of this and integrating it into Bramble we're going to keep Bramble's back section of the split but use the front section of this piece probably up to about here repairing that and then you can make one splice into the other and the sandwich together with a lap type jaw along here that will give us if we, if we were to look at the top piece of this metal and where it goes it finds its way onto the front section of that piece and the back section forms this half now on bramble that's all right until the bottom so we're going to pinch this piece leave that so what we want to do with this is extract almost a half shape of it. We would be taking out, and it also alleviate the fact you have to drill into this so we can keep this. We want this down to there as a half section and that's going to go in. And that means that we won't lose a lot of the line up of the car because you are going to be moving the striker plate. but because we're leaving the back piece we can mate it back up with its new front piece and so get to our position correct so the first job is to get this down into component form getting the paint off the here grinding this off splitting those halves up extracting the spot welds all the way down this pillar to release this and then creating our own repair section almost new old stock if you will take all the paint off it repair this section here and have our repair panel ready it's a shame you can't buy one of those but you can't it's all part of the challenge so the first job I will do is get this off get those spot welds off and lift a nice half section away from this piece Okay, it's going to be a little bit trickier down the bottom because you can't see the spot welds. We've got to try and come from the back. We don't want to drill that top piece. We want to attack it from the back. All right, so a lot of 
crock sanding is going to happen on this so a lot of it's going to be filed down I'm not going to be doing as many spot well drills as we normally do I've got access and means to attack it from different perspective first piece I'll take off is this here we go it's going to be power file crock sander time and off we go there's a piece from a wider angle okay I'm going to set myself up and uh, get grinding get sanding here we go okay we're going well but here's a tip to help you as I slowly bring you in down to floor level okay it's all cosy nice isn't it Mag mount torch just showing you there. Now, if you're splitting panels apart to salvage and forage and uh, scavenge what you need, like what I'm doing with this, a bit of a scavenging mission, this came off a scrap body shell. We've got the roof off it as well. The rest of it's all over eBay uh, from a long time ago. But this car gave me this panel. Right, so what I've done, some of the spot welds, we're trying to get, sorry, we're trying to get the front half, by the way. Some of the spot holes are really close to the edge of the panel and make it life difficult sometimes with drilling them. So there is a technique you can use if you don't need one of the halves. In our case, we didn't need the back half of this. We need the lower piece of it, but we don't need the middle central section and the roof bit is chopped off and long gone off, probably sold off. Now, what you can do to save yourself some time, I'm just going to rotate it so you get a better angle. You're going to come in from the top now. There you go. A bit more light you can see on YouTube. Hope the screen resolution is good enough for you there. Down and in we go. Now look, weaken the run of spot wells. You can just see some of them burned where the, the pronounced metal gets hotter quicker than the rest of the surrounding metal. But go in with this. Oh, crocky. So we keep going there, crocky. Don't tell anybody. Go in with that. And that weakens that side. And just, whoa. I'm going to save that for you. Slice straight down the middle. If you slice straight down the middle of this section, and you start to rock it. Rock it, man. Help me, John. It splits. And we want the front intact with no drill holes in it. And that's another reason why we didn't want to have spot welder going through and distorting that edge as well. Now that edge has had no force applied to it at all. It's totally in straight piece. You'll have original dimples. And if you're plugged, you'd be able to keep your spot weld dimples. If you spot weld, then you'll get you can go through the originals, or you can go in between, or whatever you want to do. But that half is now extracted without any distortion along its line and any thinning of its metal face. Look, there's the original primer, curiously, and a sort of uh, creamy grey colour here. Our brown's gone for a little walkie, so. We do the same with this side. We go down with the crocky and we weaken it and grab and rock it and it'll crack apart. And then I'll save you a hell of a lot of time. Because let's face it, when am I ever going to use the intersection? Uh, you're going to use the intersection the next time you re rebuild a two door. I don't think so. Uh, and it was already chopped at the top. Oh, I shall still keep the metal. Could always weld it back together, couldn't you? <laughs> I need the front part, I don't need the back part, I'll never need the back part, although I do need the bottom piece of the back part, so you work out what you're going to need. If it was an uber, uber rare panel, and it seems sacrilege to split it in half, then perhaps you could start drilling with the holes to sort, and just about make it, but because they're on the edge, it's, it's tricky, because the pilot hole needs to be in the middle, which is not quite going to get it, I mean it could have gone, it could have gone and uh, you could have really spent a lot longer but a quick way sometimes I would call a shortcut and the, ad the only disadvantage of the shortcut is this it's got a lot of advantages one of the disadvantages of that shortcut I've just told you or tip or trick or whatever you want to call it is that you lose one of the halves 
it doesn't become salvageable anymore because you've butchered it, split it effectively. So that's one downside. It feels a little painful, but I didn't even know I had this piece. So anyway, that's it. I'm going to do the same on this side. So if you were doing a panel uh, on any car, could be a mini, could be a Jag, could be anything, and you're trying to save one half of a section that's joined like this, or indeed in other areas where it's not two halves, break, weaken, bend, and let them snap. And now we can see what we're up against. We can start peeling that off. Very carefully now we start to extract what's left, the thinned out metal. Peel that back without any distortion, leaving a nice clean face for us to be using without any problems. Down here was the wing. We did the same principle with the wing. And the wing section came off. So we're now starting to look like the half piece that we need. It's going to need some cleaning up, but we're going to make that look like a nice new old stock panel. We will repair, repair that on it. Just about catch that there. And then we'll repair the bottom section of that and then we can add that to the car and we stagger the join we stagger the join on the half and we're in okay so that's what i'm doing i'm going to carry on now splitting this up i'll save you the pain you just leave it with me for me to to chop 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 then once i've got that piece on it's a full-on uh, workshop clean up because we're getting covered in, in dust here it's time to have a, a little break and a workshop clean up okay continuing on B-pillar, salvage, scrap panel. Okay, we're back round to the B-pillar area and the B-pillar here, whilst needs the paint scrubbing off it, we've now got the repair metal in, copying off the other side the best we can, shaping and bending and cutting. We eventually get a shape that we think is something like right. Little infill pieces, little curves and bends, then weld it in and just lightly ground back for now with some overcut metal on the edge because we don't really know where it lands on the wing because there's no wing left. So that is the first fix for that B-pillar repair. I'm happy that we're in the right area for it. I've got to do a little bit of metal inlay there. That won't be hard. It's ready to start offering up into position. Before we do that, we need to get this piece off because we're doing, as I said, a sandwich job here. Um, two pieces together. Highlight the spot weld first. I've just got the scotch pad. Just take off the phosphate coating surface they left on the shell and you'll start to do our usual one, two, buckle my shoe and reveal these spots. So I'll get my yellow pen, dab those, pile it through, and then we want to extract this. Now, as I pointed out, it's migged here, so I'm going to run the slitting disc up the edge rather than try and, well, there's not much you can do. You can't drill them out, really. So we're just going to slit about halfway through. That will leave the wing dangling a bit. But at least it will get us this off. Take it off up there and we'll take it off at the cut point that we pick. Got to bear in mind we've only so much metal there but um, some of this won't be getting used. Probably just below the seat belt anchor point. We'll check that the anchor seat belt bolt is in good order. If not, we'll repair it. Okay gonna just drill these out you'll see me now just extracting this B pillar using the whole saw just down here grabbing it for you now there's our cutter it's still look going good with the cut cutting oil Ian sent us some nice cutting oil from Patreon thanks Ian sent me a right good goodie box with gloves cutting discs and all sorts another goodie box came in the post we'll review that uh, Ian's goodie box soon because it's just at my unit at the moment my lockup but there you go pilots three mil today on the hss drill bit and we're going to go through wish me luck as i pilot out and then spot weld drill and extract that damaged b pillar let's get it out get the other one in away we go
Okay, we'll start just... I saw them splitting as I went along. Ooh. Straight away, big... Big movement. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! That just saves so much messing about when they come off nice. Oh, right, we're tightening up towards the top, but there's a, a cluster up there which we need to free up. But we're right, gone down at the bottom dead quick. Without any, without any fuss. So we'll work our way up there, just easing with the chisel in the edge. Of course, we've got braze and we've got weld situations going on, and also we've got to free up this edge of the wing, which we will do. Get the uh, angle grinder with the slitting disc on that now. We can start to manipulate this and break it off. If I can free it up, I'll be able to rock it a little bit. Bit of a uh, bit of rocking, bit of any rocket. Okay, here we go. Okay, you can see what we're up against. A bit tricky to get in and try and fix that. Would have had to come out to get what we needed. However, that came off pretty nicely. So B pillar off, leaving a nice. Now we need to just cut up a little bit higher, and we're gonna, we've got our backing piece. Hopefully, our backing piece is mainly intact. There is some. It has attacked it a bit there. Intact attack attack intact but not too bad. It's okay, it's salvageable. I'm going to slice off to make the right uh, stagger join. Something like this, see? We just work out the right place to cut that now. And obviously repair that hole in it as well. It won't take long to do that. Um, square of metal and there's a little oval cut out for the door rubber hinge pivot point to go in. But that's mainly intact again. Small square patch in there. We'll start sizing it up. B pillar repair. Let me just take you around this side. I kept this section of the uh, the inner face of the B pillar because if you have a look at this, grabbing it off the floor, this was damaged at the bottom. So why not keep? The rest of it's good, why not keep the bottom? So I just did the right cut. We're now just slotting this in. We've got a guide. Look at that cut out there, just by my thumb now. That follows into that groove and that's how you line it up. So we're now just gonna cut that side so this thing goes flush. 
then it's ready to try the sill and to see roughly how it all fits together we can clamp it up here then we've got to do the the stagger cut up the top that's not a problem that's easy to do but i say we're going to do we're going uh we're cutting on the donor piece not on the original uh trying to get our lights in the way for you there but just getting it to fit exactly right really measuring double measuring and obviously we've got that repair like i said so i'm just going to cut that inner bead pillar sheet and then i'm going to clamp it in place and just see how it fits with the sill because it might be that this doesn't work or it's not quite the right shape and we've got to do a bit more hammering so we'll see mocking it up now for uh, the fit to the sill clamping it up at the top bead pillar Still going good. Brambles be color. Okay, object of this exercise now complete. And that was to see that our be pillar repair works. Snug up against the A, going across, and then snug up against the B, in line with the index tab there, and starting to make it fit. So, and then flush fitting up on this one, the inner piece. That one needs. That one was um, undercut, so we need to recut that so it joins. It's uh, out by quite a bit there, but we left it oversized to trim exact as we got closer and closer to the target. So you can see that it's just at the back of it. That grey piece of metal versus the lighter grey. Just slice that so it joins it as a butt, and then that fits in correct. So that's in the right position. The sill's looking initially good as well. You can see. The old remnants of the corner of the wing where it would go under and meet the sills now ready to go under there and join that. Okay, like that. Up at the end for the uh, wheel tub, so more or less correct. This little edge, we've got to trim a little bit off there. Just a little bit off there to give it a little bit more leeway if it needed it. We made that again oversized so we could trim exact when we actually did this exact job so a little bit of just fine tuning now on the B pillar then to make the cut here so it can join Bramble's original pillar and meet up and then repair this hole here obviously the wing goes and then we got ourselves we're up to that level we've reached the halfway point so that'd be good so the inner sill can fit on the outer sill we can prepare and paint these faces with a weld through clean all the paint off that and get that in some primer that B pillar and just get it all tidied up but at least we know we're in the right area for this and we don't have to do any more fabbing around that that's correct it fits flush there so that was good we we'll repair on that take everything off again now and then do the necessary stuff so I'll strip it all back I thought I'd just show you this you couldn't if you tried a spot weld there and a spot weld there exactly where I want to take that piece out landed on two exact spot welds couldn't have planned it <laughs> oh dear okay we'll have to, I'm just gonna use the uh, file sander I'm gonna get a different name every time today power file and I'll just file them off thin that out and then take it there's no point put another drill through there I'll just file them off gotta clean this up anyway so I'll get the file on this clean them up I was just going to say, you couldn't if you tried, get that to land there. There's the seatbelt bracket, we missed it. Seatbelt anchor, reinforcer, missed that. No probs.
The bear is back in 14. Got some questions for you, Sean. You ready? Yeah. Just stop that sand in there. I know you like it. Just doing a little bit of uh, the aluminium fill over some of the little craters. Uh, question from uh, John 078. I presume he was born in 78. Does Sean play rugby? I did when I was at school, but I'm a, I don't play rugby, but I am a rugby fan. Okay, he's a, so he's a rugby fan. Right, so Next one is uh, Chris Anopolis. It looks like a Greek name. Chris Anopolis. Chris Anopolis. Uh, can we see Sean's tattoos? He's a tattooist in, in Greece, in um, Kos. Uh, he must have a shop. Uh, let's have a look at some of your tattoos, please. We... Where did you get them done? Well, I just said local in Lancashire. All in Southport. Yeah. Okay, that's that one. Last one. Good to see Sean the bear back. Now, I don't know why he's... Bear, the bear back! Good to see Sean the bear back. The bear back. That's just when he's put a thumbs up, so... From bear lover 97 well, I think he's taking the mic. <laughs> taking the mic. Oh, good to see Sean Bear. <laughs> I don't know if he's being rude. Okay, that's it. So Sean's little mini fan club there.